Do you like the merch? I was just gonna say. Let's go. Shout it out. Give it a shout out. Yeah. 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 So we uh, we have we have merch now thanks to thanks to Kyle Glass of Pro Tri News and Soph, like my fiance. They uh, they hooked it up. We got we have like three shirts. We have this one that Kyle made. It's actually our number one seller. I didn't think that was. Yeah. I mean, it's sick. I love it. I love love the shirt. And then this one this is my personal favorite. This little gorilla with T Foley racing. Then we just got the standard like black shirt logo. If you guys want to cop, it's on the website. Um, but yeah, so uh, pretty cool. I mean, they've been doing really good. So it'll be, be kind of cool to see people at races next year, like in some kit. Because um, I know I know people have been asking and stuff. So should be should be cool. Um, all right. Twenty, thirty by four hundred at threshold, so like seventy-three to seventy-five seconds per lap off forty seconds rest. Um, and I'll explain why we're doing that. Seventy-five more seconds. Like I was saying, yeah, threshold. I mean, I can go over this later, but this is our first time, hit, my first time hitting threshold since pre Placid build. So I've been on a very sub threshold tempo LT1, whatever you want to call it. That's what I've been doing. So today is my first time putting on new carbons, trying out the ons, and uh, getting the gears turned two and a half weeks out for Kona. So a lot of volume has been done, I'm trying to turn the gear a little bit. I'm probably just gonna do five more, chill, just to get it done because I feel good. I, I like that call.
71. Feeling chill. I don't want to speak on ultra athletes' behalf, but if you want to run a 230 marathon <coughs> at the end of an eight hour race, probably got to be at least sub 220 marathon shape if you're going to do 230 off the bike. So if you're not doing 3400s in 70 seconds or something, explain to me how you're going to run 545 pace for eight hours or whatever. All right, one more. Hi. Right. Hi. Right. Um, so just pretty much in the last heavy preparations of my of my Kona build, I'm gonna I'm gonna push hard up until the week of the race, like week week out from the race. Um, still have a good weekend, the eight, nine, seven days out from Kona, as I usually do. I did that with Ironman Lake Placid. Do that with most of my 70s. <coughs> um, just when you train such high volume all the time, you know, if you do 30 hour weeks and even cut it down to 20, I mean, as a third reduction in volume, I think my math, my math checks out. So I don't want to go too chill, too early, um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's my thought process on there, and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of nosedive uh, pretty heavy um, into the race week. I learned that from from Lionel last year. Um, uh, shadowing him is, I think he's probably changed his taper model now, but <coughs> I know last year he he would kind of do the same, like train hard through through the weekend before the race, and then just like super chill race week, like. 30 minute ride. I remember the day before St. George last year, we did like a 17 minute ride and I was like, is that it? It's like, yep. So I don't go that extreme. I'll do at least like 45 minutes, but pretty much that kind of same model. They train pretty good and then kind of nosedive. Um, travel in the Wednesday of race week. So I got a, a direct flight out of Denver to Kona um, Wednesday morning, get into Kona Wednesday afternoon. Um, it's great coming from coming from Denver, um, coming from Colorado. I, I can fly eight hours direct in a in a nice seat and just recover, relax, sleep. I think uh, I think the flight's at like seven a.m. or something. <coughs> so I think Soph and I actually got a hotel Tuesday night at the airport. So we're just gonna Uber in Tuesday afternoon, get dinner, Netflix, chill, all that kind of stuff. Um, wake, whatever you like. I didn't mean it like that. You know what I mean. And then. Um, and then just wake up and just catch the plane. So like bags will be packed by that Monday. Just like very chill, low key. I want to keep stress hormones, just all that down. Um, Cause I know too, like um, say following the same travel itinerary I did for Placid. So like the 72 hour altitude rule. Um, yeah, like I said, I did that for Placid. I traveled Thursday for a Sunday race and I just usually feel pretty crappy those two days. Uh, heading, heading down to sea level, sleep really well. Resting heart rate drops. Five, three to five beats, which is nuts when you're already at like low 40s, upper 30s for it to drop that much coming from, I think my house sits at 5,500 to, to go to, you know, zero for it to drop that much. Um, I sleep well. Uh, and then usually on that third day of being at sea level, I, I'm feeling good, like really good. And I don't really notice it. I was telling my dad the other day, like, uh, or Stu maybe, when I'm running here, it's not like I really notice the altitude. It's just when, then when I leave, I'm like, oh wow, like, six minute pace or whatever is so easy and then like whatever 340 on the bike is so easy it's like you can do it here which is great i think about this altitude levels i can still do it but then when i go you know home or to sea level race it's just you get that boost it feels great um so that's that's the travel itinerary um and yeah okay two questions for sorry you. no you're good <laughs> no 
All right. <clears throat> Next question. Tell us about your training. Yeah, tell us about your training lately. It looks like yeah. you've been keeping it fun and loose. Yeah. And because I've seen you on the gravel bike a few times, and I've seen a few routes you've taken, just down to Denver, just yeah, different routes than I think a lot yeah. of triathletes training for Kona would take. So you can touch on that and keeping it fun. Yeah, I I, I do this sport um, one because I'm I'm halfway decent at it and I can make money and support Sophonai's life, but uh, two because I because I love it. I love I love exercising. I, I think it's like today I did a, I did a three hour ride following this this track session. And I went uh, I went into the mountains a little bit. Went into the suburb of, of Gum Barrel, hit like, like Lobo Trail, just on the gravel bike. And I don't know. And like you said, like last week, I just had an easy three four hour aerobic ride, just whatever two hundred twenty watts or something. It's like I don't always need to be sitting in TT listening to like a David Goggins you know pump up speech. I was like, oh, there's a bike trail, perfect perfect it takes you all the way to denver literally hopped off the bike trail did a loop downtown and then came back on another bike trail it was just great um so yeah i i'm a i i try to put out this uh this persona of like i'm super hard like like super focused guy all the time and uh i like i am that like when i race and sometimes and stuff but like deep down like i just i thrive off of just being happy loving self loving life hanging out with you and my friends stuff like that um so that's how I like to keep my training. And then how I've been training right now is much different how I trained in high school and college and maybe super early on in my triathlon career, where it was like super high intensity. Volume was decent, but just trying to kill myself all the time. Because when you kill yourself on the track, you know, you go to bed at night feeling good about yourself. You're like, man, I, I made myself hurt today, but then I hurt tomorrow and then I can't race like that. So I've come to the approach um, that I don't need a lot of intensity to do well um intensity is is variable like it, that, that could mean different things but i don't need a ton of work i need to train a lot i think i thrive off of great 25 30 35 40 hour weeks like i, I thrive off of that i really do but like a session like this and um this has been a seven week build with my friend paul stafford here at florida state and then at colorado we did 10 by k twice 12 by k twice 15 by k twice and then now we did 3400s and those were all just run at like 315 to 320 per K pace, so 70.3 pace off of a minute break. Um, keeping lactate, like my lactate, I think on all that was like under two, but just checking the box. Like I don't, and then, you know, running big volume run weeks, 70, 80, 90 mile run weeks. Um, Cause at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do in an Ironman is not, is not that hard. Like actually like running, running the 230 marathon, like that's, that's a competitive age group time. You know what I mean? So like, the demands aren't nuts, so I'm not trying to just kill myself all the time. Um, I'm just trying to get a good sub threshold LT1, and then build my body up. Like I, I, I think I learned that I learned a word from Lionel last year. It's called mu muscle fatigue resistance. I think I can do, you know, I can do 500 watts for over five minutes. I can run a four minute mile. I can do all these really high intensity things, but I found that like just riding my bike for six hours, how it does for someone else, say like a San Juan, doesn't phase them that much. It would phase me a lot, you know, I need to build up my body to do that. And I think I did that well, because in Placid, I, I got to mile 25 and then my quads started hurting. Like it wasn't, but I had done some pretty big volume run weeks, but you can't do 100 mile run weeks or 80 mile run weeks in triathlon if you're ripping on the track three days, a, three times a week, you know what I mean? So you gotta monitor. So this is just the one track session, one run workout that I've been doing all see all, all build is just one workout and then just a ton of volume you excited for kona i'm excited for kona um i i don't know I, it hasn't even hit me maybe it's just because i'm not even there which is kind of what i'm trying to avoid as well because uh, i'm sure I'll, i will get nervous um but i'm I, i'm not i'm not nervous uh right now i'm not i'm sure i will be uh you asked if i'm excited i can't maybe i am nervous i can't even think straight um but I, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to, to truly race the best in the world. The Christians, Magnus, Gustav, laid low. Just, you know, and the list goes on. Um, so it'll be interesting if I can put together a compet competent, comparable, whatever, swim, uh, ride the bike really well, and then I hope run run to my capability. I think only five people, four to five people have, o have only ever broke 240 in Kona. Um, Maybe I can be the sixth. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure maybe five people will do it this year. You know, but maybe I can be one of those people. I think if I want a shot at the top ten, 
top American outside podium, something like that. I have no, I have no idea. You know, um, top ten would be great, but we'll see. If I want to be in the thick of it towards the end of an eight-hour race, it's going to come on the run. Um, so, so we'll see. I've been, I've been doing the work. I've been, you know, following all the Stravas, all the YouTubes. I'm sure, you know, everyone's fit. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll see. I'm about to go jump in the sauna now. We'll see. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm training in a very temperate environment. I think it's like 55 degrees out right now. Uh, I mean, you're in a hoodie. I'm cold right now. But again, that's another thing. Like, I don't, I don't know if I, if I need a ton of heat training. I was born and raised in, in Florida, and um, it might just be too much. You know, it's. I, I really, for the, you know, until I feel like I have accomplished everything I can in pra like in a training standpoint, maybe when I'm thir in my 30s, then I'll try to do some extra stuff. But right now I'm just trying to do like nine and a tenth. Like I'm really just trying to show up to all these races healthy and 99% fit. So if I'm 99% fit, like I was in, in Placid or a 70.3 Boulder, then I can race at 101 and just give it give the goods rather than if I'm like just a hair over that line or I'm just not recovering because it's so hot or whatever then you just feel like a shell of a human on, on race day. So that's my mindset. I've been having a good time. Soph and I and Kenny and uh, the whole team here have been having a, have a great time and hopefully we can end the season with a, with a good result. Um, so we'll see what that, what that means. Oh, yeah. <coughs> All right. Well, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to head to Lifetime Fitness, go, uh, go jump in a sauna for 30 minutes, dry sauna, 195 degrees, and uh, yeah, try to, try to get some heat training on. I, I don't even know if that's scientific or not. I'm just jumping in a sauna because it's hot. I'm like, oh, Kona's hot, so why not? Um, anyways, bro science. Uh, and then, yeah, we got, we got the merch. Uh, Kyle Glass, my friend, and um, Soph uh, really worked hard on, on trying to get some merch. I know a lot of you guys are wanting some stuff. Um, and I think it'd be cool to have some some fans and supporters and, and that stuff for Kona and uh, and next year. Um, so yeah, we got we got this super cool white shirt. It's actually our number our number one best selling shirt. Kyle uh, edited uh, designed it, um, so that's gonna be cool. This is my personal favorite. Uh, this is the cute little gorilla guy with uh, T Foley racing underneath, and then we just have a standard black T with like the TFR logo and stuff. Um, I think there's just, there's only a few of each sizes. It's on the the tfoleyracing.com website if you guys want to go support um really appreciate it thank you and uh yeah hoping to do another run i think kenny and this time we just wanted to get something out super quick for kona so um super thankful to soph and kyle like to fast track that but i think kenny and i are gonna work on getting some cool fun stuff for uh for early next season like an oceanside or something but anyway thanks for all the love guys this will probably be the last video before kona and then uh obviously we're gonna race kona and then you know you know, for if you're first or you're last, we'll we'll make a post race interview. Uh, it just might only be one minute if we're last. Well, maybe if you're last, it'll actually be longer because I'll have more excuses. But anyway, thanks for all the love, and I'll see everyone in Kona.